Hello and welcome back. Fruiting conditions. What are they? What does fruiting mean? I'll go over the optimal environmental conditions, humidity, temperature, light, and fresh air exchange, different methods of fruiting, shoe boxes, monotubs, and bags. I'm going to answer some common questions and talk about various problems and situations you might run into while fruiting, as well as try to cover some terminology. I'm going to cover the process of fruiting from spawning to bulk up until harvest. If you're new to mushroom cultivation, this video should give you a basic understanding of the process and concept of fruiting mushrooms. We'll start with fruiting and fruiting conditions. Fruiting is the reproduction portion of the life cycle. It's a metabolic shift that causes the mycelium network to condense and form fruit bodies, aka mushrooms. The exact cause and to what degree humidity, temperature, fresh air, CO2, and light play a part in primordia and subsequent fruit body creation is still somewhat of a mystery. There are various theories about each one's separate effect. There is some consensus on increasing fresh air and humidity being a major cause of the initiation of fruiting, but the exact cause is still unknown. In most cases, once the mycelium colonizes the bulk substrate, if you provide the correct environment, it will begin the process of making mushrooms. Our job is to provide the best environment during this phase. The goal is to set up an environment that requires the least amount of interference and as little amount of variance as possible in the environmental parameters. It's worth saying that at any point, depending on the situation, mycelium can fruit at any time. It will make mushrooms on agar. It will grow mushrooms in spawn jars and bags. And it can grow mushrooms well before 100% colonization of the bulk substrate. Contamination can be one of many causes at any phase as mycelium will attempt to escape by fruiting and making spores. Improper moisture content in the bulk substrate, spawn, and low humidity I think could be likely causes for early fruiting as well. For the same reason, the mycelium probably panics and tries to escape if it thinks it's going to die soon. Finally, but probably not the only other reason, it could be genetics that fruit early or even old mycelium. If you run into the problem of early fruiting, make sure your spawn and bulk substrate are hydrated properly, make sure there is adequate humidity, and try growing a different culture of the same cultigen if possible. Whenever you're learning something new, it's important to realize it takes time and dedication to develop skills, instincts, and knowledge. A small percentage of people are lucky early on, and I think a lot of people fail or get poor results their first time, and even first few times. Some people go months or longer trying without being successful. You have to realize from the beginning that some things will not fruit successfully, and you are likely to run into various kinds of contamination at any point in the process. The main focus in the beginning should be on all of the sterile process, becoming familiar with all the different lab tools, procedures, and sterile technique. The first inoculation to making spawn, all the way up until spawning to bulk, needs to be sterile. This part is where most of your contamination is likely to come from. It can be introduced after you begin fruiting, but if you start with strong clean spawn and clean bulk substrate, you are a lot less likely to run into contamination until after a few flushes when the mycelium has less nutrients and is probably tired or weak. For a lot of people, this can become a passion as well as fruiting. It's very easy to become consumed by the amount of work you can easily create. Cultures are fairly simple to store and maintain, but dealing with all the different variables of fruiting can be overwhelming, so make sure you don't get ahead of yourself, especially if you experience failure. Try to at least go slow in the beginning and only work with a couple cultures and maybe fruit only one or two things at a time, like one shoebox, bag, or monotub, until you get a better understanding and are successful. Don't start out fruiting 10 different things when you don't even know what you're doing because you will likely have a lot of failures. As you become successful, slightly increase your workload if you desire. Make sure to pace yourself and you can avoid being frustrated, wasting time, money, and resources, and avoid burning yourself out. With that out of the way, we can begin with the environmental parameters. Humidity. As mushrooms grow, water evaporates off the surface of the mushroom. If there isn't enough humidity in the environment, it can have a negative effect on mushroom growth and cause everything to dry out too fast. You can measure humidity with a hygrometer. I would recommend getting two or three and put them in different parts of your environment, the room or tent you choose to grow in. They are fairly cheap but can be inaccurate.
Having multiple will give a better idea of the average relative humidity in the environment. There are more accurate hygrometers, but they cost more. You can buy them on Amazon for fairly cheap, and they sell them at most stores like Home Depot or Lowe's. There are also devices called humidistats that regulate the operation of humidifiers, dehumidifiers, intake and exhaust fans to maintain a consistent level of humidity in the environment. They turn things on and off based on the humidity level in the environment. Inkbird is a popular brand if you're interested in getting one. These devices are usually more accurate and cost more, but are not required. In most cases, if you run an AC or a heater in your house, you will probably have low humidity anyway, but you could run into problems of having too much humidity, which can result in heavy condensation and create problems like puddles of water on your substrate or in your environment. The best range for humidity is 85-95%. to 95%. 95% is the point where heavy condensation might begin to form. It's optimal to maintain condensation if you're growing in a shoebox, monotub, or any other semi-closed or closed container, but you don't want it to be dripping all over everything. If you're going to run humidity this high, your fresh air exchange needs to be adequate in order to prevent heavy condensation. I would recommend 85-90%. to 90%. Try to aim for closer to 90%. 95% is probably optimal for primordia formation. Once mushrooms actually begin to form, I'd lower the relative humidity to 85-90%, to 90%, just so the humidity is still high, but there's less of a chance of dripping condensation. Hygrometers, like I've said, are known to be inaccurate. Some humidistats can fail at high humidity levels as well, so I think it's worth being a bit conservative to avoid the potential problem of maxing out humidity. I don't think the humidity being high would hurt the mycelium. It would probably prefer it, but it can create microclimates that competitor organisms thrive in. Everything being too wet is pretty much an invitation for contamination. The relative humidity in the environment is going to dictate how quickly the substrate dries out. If your humidity gets too low for too long, the air in the environment will pull the moisture out of the substrate. If the substrate gets too dry, it can prevent the mycelium from making mushrooms, and if your substrate is too dry, the mycelium won't even colonize it in the first place. Also, while the mushrooms are growing, they need a certain amount of humidity to mature and form correctly. If your humidity is too low, the mushrooms can slow down and start cracking, and even stop growing altogether. When they completely stop growing, this is referred to as an abort. Once a mushroom aborts, it will not start growing again. The cap will usually turn black or dark blue and should be picked or removed before it rots. If there's no signs of contamination on them, you can still eat them. They are usually stronger than normal sized mushrooms. In some cases, the mycelium can recolonize or reclaim the aborts and grow mushrooms on them. But the older mushroom doesn't grow and is likely going to be rotten. If you live in an environment with low humidity, you can still grow mushrooms, but will likely end up having to mist or rehydrate your substrate. With shoeboxes and monotubs, you want to maintain a nice layer of condensation on the lid and walls at all times. The best way to handle an environment with low humidity is to grow inside of a grow tent or a fruiting chamber. Alternatively, you could just add a humidifier to whatever room you're growing in. There are humidifiers that have built-in humidistats if you go that route. Later in the video, I'll show you how to make fruiting chamber for shoeboxes and other small containers. Temperature. The optimal temperature for a particular fungus, like humidity, is more of a range than an exact temperature. Most mushroom producing fungus prefer a temperature around 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. There are others that need lower temperatures. Cubensis are happy between 70 degrees Fahrenheit and 85 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius to 29 degrees Celsius. If the temp gets lower than 70, the fungus can begin to slow down and become less vigorous. In the winter, I grow in an environment that is 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit because that's the temp that I keep my house at. I can tell you from experience that it does significantly slow down growth and usually adds an extra week or two to the entire process. Everything still grows just fine, it's just slower. If you let the fungus get too cold, like below 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 and a half degrees Celsius, the fungus can stop growing completely and go dormant. Freezing can likewise make the fungus go dormant and even kill the fungus. 70 degrees Fahrenheit is probably the lowest you want your environment to go 
if you're trying to maintain the optimal environmental conditions. 85 degrees Fahrenheit is what I would recommend as the highest temperature. You can grow mushrooms in higher temperatures and to a certain extent it can speed up the process, but there is a point where it will begin to have diminishing returns and begin to inhibit growth of the fungus. 90 degrees is probably the highest I would let it get. With higher temps, evaporation is increased and can dry your substrate out faster. I don't have air conditioning in my house, so two months out of the year in the summer, my environment gets into the 90s and drops down to the 50s and 60s at night. I try not to grow as much during this point with shoeboxes because I have trouble with maintaining proper substrate moisture. Most of the shoeboxes I grow during this time get all their mushrooms around the edges of the substrate, closest to the wall of the shoebox. The center of the substrate dries out too fast because of the high temps and low relative humidity. Up until I got a tent, I was using fruiting chambers that didn't hold moisture long enough. Since getting my tent and providing humidity, I don't have this issue anymore, just high temperatures. It's worth mentioning that the fruiting chambers I was using were incomplete and didn't provide extra humidity. They were just shoeboxes in a large plastic container. The fruiting chamber I'm going to show you how to make does provide extra humidity and is a viable way to grow. You don't have to keep the temperature at exactly 70 or exactly 85 degrees. Anywhere in that range is fine. What you want to avoid is large temperature swings. Try to keep the temp consistent within 5 to 10 degrees and try to avoid quick swings. Temperature swings can cause heavy condensation inside the shoe boxes and lead to puddling of water on the substrate and prematurely drying out the substrate. Consistency is the key. You want to keep all the environmental parameters as consistent as possible to get the best results, quality and yield. If you have to heat or cool your environment, it's recommended to heat or cool the entire room you're growing in. Don't point a heater or air conditioner directly at your grow as it could get too hot or too cold and cause massive temperature swings. Heat or cool the room, not the fungus. Light. Light is one of the many areas that we really don't know much about as far as its effect on mushroom growing fungus. What we do know is the fungus uses light in order to tell which direction the mushrooms grow. This is known as phototropism. They usually grow directly towards the light source. They can, however, grow in any direction. You don't need any kind of special grow lights to grow mushrooms. Normal ambient light from any light bulb will usually provide adequate light for your fungus. Light from a window is fine, but I would avoid letting sunlight just beat directly on your container as it could increase the temperature. I use cheap LED strip lights from Walmart. They cost about $10. I leave them on 24 hours a day. I think as long as you have some light every day, the mushrooms are generally going to grow in that direction. There really isn't that much too light. It doesn't seem to be very significant. There are studies on light and cubensis involving different kinds of light, like UV and far red, but they are all completely unnecessary if you're just trying to grow mushrooms. You can grow really good mushrooms with pretty much whatever light you have available. Fresh air exchange. FAE, or fresh air exchange, refers to the exchange of air inside and outside of the fruiting container. The container, unless it has a gasket, isn't completely sealed so air and moisture slowly seep out. Likewise, fresh air from outside of the container flows or is pulled in. There is going to be a constant exchange of old air in the container and fresh air from outside. Our fungus needs oxygen to grow and thrive. The fungus produces CO2 as a byproduct. Slowly over time, the oxygen gets lower and the CO2 gets higher. Without FAE, the fungus will slowly begin to suffocate and or go dormant or die. What we want is enough fresh air exchange to get rid of the CO2 and replace it with oxygen, but we don't want so much that the substrate dries out too fast. This is a critical balance and dependent on the environment, container, hydration level of the bulk substrate, hydration of the spawn, just to name a few variables. FAE is going to be specific to each grow. It's something you'll have to learn to dial in. When mushrooms don't get enough fresh air exchange, they can start to grow what's called fuzzy feet. This is when vegetative mycelium begins growing up the stem or stipe of the mushroom, usually starting at the base of the mushroom where it touches the bulk substrate. If you don't increase the air exchange, the fuzz will continue to grow up the mushrooms. This fuzz is basically harmless. It has a different texture than the rest of the mushroom, but it's perfectly fine to eat. 
Too much moisture can cause fuzzy feet as well. Things to look out for are long leggy mushrooms with tiny caps and short fat mushrooms and blobs can both be signs that you might not have the correct air exchange and or too much moisture. Thanks for watching. This video was originally 50 minutes, so I'm gonna break it up into parts. Part two will be about fruiting containers, shoe boxes, monotubs, and bags. And part three will be about terminology and common situations and problems you might run into fruiting. I promise it won't take three months for the next video. I was really doing too much and got burned out. I guess even if you love doing something, it's possible to overdo it. Thanks to everyone for all the support. See you in the next video.